I'm also dealing with a new mask, so we're all moving with grace, right? It's the era of grace. Well, welcome. Welcome to Oroville United Church of Christ. Whether you're here with us in person or watching us online, we say whoever you are, wherever you are on life's journey, you are a beloved child of God, and it is a blessing to see each and every one of you this morning. If you'd like more information about our church, I invite you to go to our website, or, and send us an email, or you can find us on Facebook at OroValleyUnitedChurchOfChrist.com, or sorry, .org. <laughs> um, you can also find us on Instagram. I don't know if anybody's on Instagram, but if you're on Instagram, like us, follow us, and share our stuff. <clears throat> A few announcements about the life of our church. 
Today is a very important day and we'll have more information to come in just a minute from our moderator, Uriah Harrell. But this afternoon, I strongly encourage you, if you are able, to join our open forum Zoom session. Like I said, Uriah is going to share some information that will help us set up that meeting. But we're going to have a meeting about the future of the church, about some big changes that are coming to the church and some where we are as a church and also how to move forward. So if you're able, please do join us at noon. And uh, we do have the Zoom link through our email. If you need it, please let myself. Where's Janet? Janet, if, if you can find Janet, uh, you can let her know if you don't have the Zoom link. We invite you to join via Zoom. <coughs> the only other announcement I have to make today is September 12th, which is two Sundays from today at 11 a.m. We're going to have our food drive-by drop-off. But we're not just doing food. We do food for ICS, uh, non-perishable foods. So nothing that's hot, but definitely canned, canned meats, canned vegetables, spaghetti, spaghetti sauce, peanut butter. Um, if you do get peanut butter, we ask you to get the normal size jars, not the Costco size jars. ICS can do a lot more with the smaller jars. <clears throat> but we're also doing diapers. Uh, and I've talked to a few people. The best size diaper to get is somewhere between three and four. So if you can get size three or four diapers, those would be awesome, much appreciated. And that comes directly from uh, my partner who knows a lot about diapers. Uh, so please, if you have any questions about that, that will be September 12th at 11 following worship. Those are the announcements I have this morning. Uh, I would now like to invite Uriah Harrell forward uh, to share an announcement with us. Uh, we might need a microphone for Uriah. Thanks. I think it's on. Testing, testing. OK, yeah, yeah. yes, I think I am on. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. This is probably the hardest time I've had to stand in front of a group. Um, Basically, uh, as a council, we've had to come together and make some difficult financial decisions in the last couple of weeks. However, these are decisions that have not started recently. These are things that we've been talking about really since COVID began. So to kind of give you a little bit of background. Um, as a church, we've been consistently dipping into our reserve account, which is our savings, year after year for several years. Um, and we've kind of reached a point where, unless we took some serious action, we were going to be out of money within a couple of months. At the beginning of COVID is actually when we started to have to have these conversations when we cut the budget wherever we could, combing through line after line and seeing where in small places we could cut back to try to get ourselves into a more stable financial position. And, and, and honestly, at that time, our prayers were answered. We got what was called a, a PPE loan. It's basically a payroll protection loan. It was a grant at the beginning of COVID between about twenty dollars and $30,000 that really allowed us to keep our full staff during the difficult time that we were going through. As many of you know, we're still wearing masks and we're still going through a really difficult time. And unfortunately, we no longer qualify for those same grants that we did a year ago. The regulations have changed. And so the difficult decision was we had to make large cuts, consistent cuts in the budget, not things that were gonna be one time, like we have to raise money for a roof or something like that. We needed to make consistent cuts. And unfortunately, that meant that the best thing we thought we could do, uh, as tragic as it feels, is letting Matt go as choir director and cutting Janet's hours to half. And really, to Pastor Drew's point, our conversation at this point and what he's been asking us and what we've been asking ourselves is, what is vital to a church? How do we stay together in difficult times? How do we grow together? How do we come together? What do we need? And Really, the, the goal of the open forum that we're going to have at 12, and I encourage you all to be a part of that on Zoom, is to really wrestle with these issues together and sit together and ask ourselves, what is truly vital and what do we do going forward? Please come and talk with us. This is not something we want just to be a decision that's handed down, but we had to do something, and it had to be something that we could sit with and use and have the money long term. And by making these cuts, the hope is that we can get the church into a more stable position, not just now, but for years to come. So I'm going to turn it back over to Pastor Drew and uh, 
I apologize, I don't have something more pleasant to part with you with, but uh, I, I, in some ways I think that would sort of cheapen the heaviness of this. So I thank you all, and uh, I just ask for God's wisdom as we work through this together. Thank you so much, Uriah. I can only imagine uh, the difficulty of that, and I have also want to give Uriah and Grace Berg, who's our vice moderator, sitting up here in the second row, um, your leaders for the last three weeks plus, um, going on four weeks now, have been on call every week they've needed to be. They've met multiple times, they've looked at the budget countless times, and this was not an easy decision to come to. I'd also like to share something Uriah, uh, Uriah highlighted the biggest cuts. Uh, we have to let go of the choir director, which means we do have to let go of Matt. Um, we have cut Janet's hours in half. We're also looking at cutting our cleaning costs in half. But in order to cut our cleaning costs in half, we would need volunteers to clean this space, to clean this space when you are able. We've had a few people stand up and volunteer, and we are grateful for those people. If you are able to stick around on a Sunday afternoon between 11.30 and noon, and help to clean up this place and keep it clean, especially for the following Sunday, uh, we'd be deeply grateful. It would really help the church. This is a really hard time. Today is a hard day. And just in that, I want to take a moment of silence before we begin worship. Dear God, the one who is love, we come to you in a time of great pain and suffering, a time of very tough decisions. God, this is not new for you. You've known endless time of pain, suffering, and struggle. Yet in every moment, you've broken in to come to those who are faithful, to come to those who are committed to your call and your way. And even when pain and suffering were part of the path, you led them through courage, through wisdom, and most importantly, through love, to new and eternal life. God, we, your beloved children, Oroval United Church of Christ, cry out to you in this time. We especially lift up all of our siblings and our staff who have given so much to this community, especially at this time, Matt and Janet and Rosa. We lift them up, God, please be with them. And ask, we ask for their forgiveness as we make incredibly difficult decisions. God, most importantly, we ask for your mercy and your grace to lead us, to hold us together, and to remind us that Whatever we lose, whatever we choose to do in this time, that the most important thing we do is love one another, love you, and follow your way. As we come to worship today, may we lift up our griefs and our joys in search of your call. Let us all join together singing your call to worship. Please stay. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel his mighty power and his grace. I can feel the brush of angels. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Arise, my fair one, and come away, says the Lord. The season of giving is upon us. Yes. 
Arise, my fair one, and come away, calls our God. Please join me in a spirit of prayer. Bountiful God, giver of the fruit of the vine, your call to righteous living stirs the heart like the oils of gladness. Sweet-smelling frankincense, sandalwood myrrh, and pungent cassia. You're charged to be doers of the word and not hearers only. Sparks the soul like the fragrance of wildflowers and the blossoms of spring. Inspire true devotion in our hearts that we may care for your little ones and hearken to the needs of your people. Please join me in our first hymn this morning. It's All Things Bright and Beautiful. We'll be doing verses 1, 2, and 3. Please join me in our prayer of confession printed in your bulletin and at home appearing on your screen. Life-giving God, you know us better than we know ourselves. While we long to meet the demands of your justice, we often settle for a touch of your justification. And though we long to resist evil with every fiber of our being, it is easy to confuse our anger over petty wrongs with your anger over real misuse of power. Teach us the difference between human precepts that bloom and fade like the grass and your life-giving ways that are eternal. Help us be doers of your word and not hearers only that our lives may bear the fruit of eternal life. Amen. Dear loved ones, hear these words of God's mercy and everlasting assurance of pardon. The precepts of God bring equity to the earth. The one who anoints our lives with gladness leads us into life and the fullness of grace. Good morning. Those present. 
Uh, Kyle's working on our lay reader, Ronnie, uh, sent in her reading. So that will come through the PA system. Who may dwell on your holy hill? Those who walk blamelessly and do what is right and speak the truth from their heart. Who do not slander with their tongue and do no evil to their friends, nor take up a reproach against their neighbors. In, in whose, whose eyes, eyes the wicked are despised, are despised. but, but who honor those who fear the Lord, who stand, who stand by, by their oath, even, even to, to their, their hurt. hurt. Who do not lend money at interest, and do not take a bribe against the innocent. Those, those who, who do, do these things shall, shall never be moved. moved. ¿Quién Señor, puede habituar, ¿Quién, Señor, puede habitar en tu santuario? ¿Quién puede vivir en tu santo monte? Solo el de conducta intachable que practica la justicia y de corazón dice la verdad. Que no calumnia con la lengua, que no le hace mal a su prójimo, ni le acarrea desgracias a su vecino. Que desprecia al que Dios reprueba, pero honra al que teme al Señor. Que cumple lo prometido, aunque salga perjudicado que presta dinero sin ánimo de lucro y no acepta sobornos que afecten al inocente. El que así actúa no caerá jamás. Uh, Wendy had surgery last week, and currently there are no signs of cancer. 
think that uh, reason to celebrate and give her joy. So, prayers for uh, Reverend Alberta, his member of the community, and prayers for Wendy, prayers of joy and gratitude, and may the Spirit continue with them on this journey. A prayer for our church, especially for our ability to stay connected to faith adversity, especially today. Thanks, Kyle. Is that better? All right. Sorry about that. Uh, prayers for our community, and especially today. Today's a really tough day, and it's I. I want to pray for us today as well as we move forward, because I think this journey is going to be hard. I think that. Whatever challenges we face, though, if we face it with faith, faith in one another, faith in our mission, faith that the Holy Spirit has given us our mission, that whatever we decide to do, whatever God is calling us to do, whatever challenges and difficult decisions, whatever pain or loss we have to face, will be temporary. And this church will once again find a way to blossom and, be, and celebrate what it is, I think, its foundational attribute, resilience. So, and thank you. A big thank you because your generosity, your commitment to this church over the past 18 months especially has been outstanding. And not only given us a chance to be here today, but given us a chance to hope for what God is doing even in a time like this. So prayers. I do lift up prayers for all of our staff, uh, especially those who at the time being have been let go, uh, especially for Matt and for Janet and for Rosa. Um, may God be with them. May God's forgiveness come from them to us and maybe understanding as well. But prayers for them that they know we love them and that we hold them wherever this journey takes all of us. And for our world, especially for what's going on in Afghanistan and our U.S. service members, this is a really painful day in and day out experience, especially for the, I believe it's 13. I know the number kept changing for a minute there, but especially for the 13 service members who were killed in the attack last week. Prayers for all of them. Prayers for their families in this unimaginable time of loss and suffering. Prayers for our leaders, that they have the wisdom to know when they've messed up, to take responsibility for that, and may they have God's wisdom and love to truly lead us in these times. Are there other prayers you'd like to lift up this morning? Yeah, Vera. Vera. What's her name? Her name is um, Jane. Jane. She used to be a member here. Okay. But she had cancer on her finger. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Vera, we'll definitely lift up Jane and lift up you as well. Yeah. Are there other prayers to be lifted up this morning? If you're watching service with us, I do invite you to, if, as you feel comfortable, to share your prayers on our Facebook thread or YouTube, however you're watching us. And we will definitely hold those in our hearts. Let us go to God in a moment of silence as we lift up these prayers as well as the prayers in our hearts. Dear God, the one who has peace and healing. The one whose scriptures have called us to rejoice because today is the day you have made and that sunshine is so clear and bright. Yet today we not only come witnessing your glorious presence, we also come longing for your deep assurance, for your comfort in our pain and our suffering 
in our confusion. And most importantly, God, because we know that tomorrow won't get easier. Whatever it is we face in this life as individuals, whatever it is we face in this world as a church, whatever it is we face as human beings, we know all too well that adversity is coming. God, let us not be afraid. You told your disciples as they were sitting in a storm, do not be afraid. You told your people when they wandered in the desert. You told your prophets when they cried out from despair, isolation, and frustration. You've told your people time and time again, do not be afraid. I am with you. God, remind us of that in this time. Don't just remind us, though. Remind our siblings who sit next to us. Remind our siblings who are down the street, and throughout the world that your presence is here and now and your Holy Spirit's love, life-giving, glorious raising up of our souls in every condition is here and now and is coming tomorrow. With this faith, we join together singing the words Christ taught us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. We now enter into our time of offering together. And make sure I don't pull this thing off again. <clears throat> uh, first of all, again, as we said in the prayer time, thank you. Whatever you've done over the past 18 months to support us, whether it's when you watch us online, it supports us. It just does. So if you're on a trip sometime, you just put us on your computer and just that click matters. I know it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense to me, but it's a way to support us. If you are watching us online, you can support us by liking us and sharing our page. <clears throat> but however you support us, being here today, or whether you've been able to contribute financially, or whether you've shown up to one, if not all, of our drive-bys, now is a time to prayerfully celebrate all the ways God's love and abundance has poured out on you and the way you've shared that life and love with the world. If you do have a financial gift to give, a donation to give this morning, there's a couple ways for those in person. We have baskets in the back. We won't be passing them, but you're more than welcome to get up and uh, place a gift in the basket. Or when you leave, please, you can do that. We have envelopes and stuff. Sally's back there. She'll be happy to help you. If you're watching us online, you can go to our website, orvalleyucc.org. You can find the My Offering button. Click that, and you'll be a few clicks away from participating fully in this community in a new way. All of your gifts go to empower us, even in a difficult time, go to empower us to live out God's mission, whether it's being stewards of the resources that we do have, such as this facility, or whether it's going out into the world, answering Christ's call to serve all God's children. I'm going to read our invitation to the offering. I'll invite you to join, that, join me in that. 
But during this time, uh, we do invite you not to physically touch each other, but at the same time, you just wave to each other. We've got some cameras in the back. You can wave to those who are online. But just pass the peace and share your gift of life and love that you have this morning. Please join me in our invitation to the offering. The precepts of God bring equity to the earth. The one who anoints our lives with gladness leads us into life and the fullness of grace. Amen.
thanksgiving I'll be a living sanctuary for you Kyle I'm going to go ahead and do the scripture reading Today's scripture is Psalm 15. Lord, who may dwell in your sanctuary? Who may live on your holy hill? Those who walk, whose walk is blameless and who do what is righteous, who speak truth from their hearts and who do not use their tongue for slander, those who do no wrong to their neighbor and cast no slur on their friend. Those who despise the corrupt, but honor those who fear the Lord. Who keeps a promise even when it hurts. Those who lend money without interest and who do not accept a bribe against the innocent. Those who do these things will never be shaken. The Word of God. For Please remain standing for our Spanish reading. ¿Quién, Señor, puede habituar en tu santuario? ¿Quién puede vivir en tu santo monte? Solo el de conducta intachable que practica la justicia y de corazón dice la verdad que no calumnia con la lengua, que no le hace mal a su prójimo, ni le acarrea desgracias a su vecino, que desprecia al que Dios reprueba, pero honra al que teme al Señor, que cumple lo prometido aunque salga perjudicado, que presta dinero sin ánimo de lucro y no acepta sobornos que afecten al inocente, el que así actúa no caerá jamás. La palabra de Dios para el pueblo de Dios. Gracias, Gracias a Dios. Dios. You may be seated. Will you please pray with me? Dear God, the one who is truth, the one whose word brought forth life when there was nothing, the one whose word liberated the slaves, the one whose word brought forth miraculous, unimaginable, transformative resurrection when once there was death. God, we come to you this day to be renewed in this word, ancient and yet still so present, speaking and life-giving. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our God, our rock, and our Redeemer. Amen. <clears throat> For those who listen to me preach, uh, you know I've preached on some relatively tough topics. Today's probably the hardest. <clears throat> it's definitely up there, I'll tell you that. So, I'm going to lighten the mood a little bit. Whether, I don't know if this is helpful, but I have a joke. And we'll start with a joke. What do you get when you play country music backwards? What? Oh, wait, somebody said it. You get your dog back, your truck back, your partner back, you get your house back, you get your job back, you sober up, yeah, all kinds of good things happen. <laughs> Today I come to you in a time of pain and loss. For our church, also as we think about our own current story, we also realize that the world is going through an era of pain and loss. And that's actually to acknowledge that it makes it even more difficult for us. Because not only do we have to deal with that stuff, we also have to deal with our own stuff. There's nothing easy about this feels like a country western song, unfortunately, the worst one, 
And man, I wish, I pray to God, we could rewind and play it backwards. But we know we can't. I think it's important because I think what we're about to embark on is one of the most difficult things, and I've actually spent the last four years of my career explaining to people what I find to be the hardest act in ministry, and maybe one of the hardest human acts of all, is the act of communal grief. It's not easy. Because we have to come together, we have to acknowledge that we have really lost something in a strange way. And it's not, you know, this past week we did a memorial service for Esther Hull, one of our losses. And that makes sense to us. You know, you call your family, you get together, and in this day and age you set up a Zoom link, you sing some songs, you offer some prayers, you reflect on that life, that gift, and that beauty, and you taste and begin the journey to healing. That's what we know. Right now, though, we don't have a funeral service, thank God. We, we're not in that place. It's not the kind of grieving we're talking about. We're talking about something more mysterious. All still something painful that requires us to lose. <clears throat> Just take a second. I had a list, but I don't think it's very helpful. But we've lost a lot as a church as a community, as a world, for the past 18 months. Just think about some of the things you've lost. I'll open. Today we're announcing that we are having to part ways with our choir director, with Matt. We're having to say goodbye to half of the time and commitment that Janet gives. We're potentially in planning to give up and to lose half the time Rosa gives to this church. What are other things you have lost? Does anybody want to share something they've lost over the past year? Yes, yeah, Suzanne. Uh -huh. Home. Yeah, thank you, Suzanne. What else have you lost? Yeah, Vera. Friends. Friends. Loss of job and income. What? And contact with loved ones. Janet. Camaraderie. Camaraderie. Fellowship. Community. Anybody else? I'm going to name something that's all, I think, on all of our hearts, but I will share personally. I take this to heart in a lot of ways. We've lost in Afghanistan. That's a hard one that's going to sit with us for a long time to come. So what do you do? How do you do this grieving process? How do you face this overwhelming suffering and loss? Today's psalm, I think, gives us the answer. At least gives us the guidance. It opens with a question. Who, God, who? Who can dwell in your tent? Who can reside with you? Who can live on your holy mountain? When we get in these times of suffering and loss, when it's overwhelming, when we can't take any more, the questions are louder than the answers, even if there are any answers to be present. I can't read today's psalm. Maybe it was written in a different spirit, but I can't read today's psalm and not hear those questions coming from a place of anguish, suffering, confusion, chaos, So what's the psalmist come to? How does the psalmist answer the psalmist's own question? The answer is mission. 
The answer isn't some sort of specific act, but rather the foundational principles of what it means to be a disciple of God, to be a person of God. Seek justice. Live with integrity. Speak the truth from your heart. Do not slander your friends. Do right to those, all of those, to your neighbor. Love thy neighbor. Keep your promises, even when it hurts. Here's how you know this passage is incredibly ridiculous and incredibly challenging. Lend money without interest. Imagine that. Imagine if you lent money without interest. It's about a mission. It's about living day to day and saying to yourself, how am I going to live with integrity and justice and truth? How am I going to commit myself to the promises I've made, most importantly, the promise to my Creator, the one, my Redeemer, the source of all life, God. How am I going to do that today? This is a really difficult time for our church. The path of heaven, I totally agree with Uriah. This is not something new. It happened a lot faster than we expected. It shocked us. And by us, I mean your council and myself. The timing of all of it is awful and terrible. There's no doubt about it. The reality is, we are at a point where all of our options ask for us to give up something, to lose, to face pain and suffering, to ask questions about who we are, about what our mission is, our calling, and what is essential to answer that call. What is essential? What are we able to do to fulfill God's call? There's nothing easy about that. And I have prepared myself, and I invite you to prepare yourselves, that this will get harder before it gets easier. I leave you, though, with the promise of Christian faith. Seven verses, seven, sorry, excuse me, seven chapters after Psalm 15 is another question. It's the question of Psalm 22. It's the question that according to the Gospel of Mark, Jesus asked as his last and final human words as he died. My God, my God, why? Why have you forsaken me? I've told your counsel as we went through this past month of incredibly difficult challenges, painful meetings. I told them that I felt fully immersed in the Christian story. There's a reason Jesus quotes the psalmist. Because the psalmist knows what it means to live and move with God. Jesus, for us, is our Savior, our leader, our guide, our ultimate example because Jesus was resurrected, because Jesus was brought to new life. But it didn't happen without pain, suffering, and loss. Not that those are needed, and you have every right to ask, why is that how things are? Great question. Wish I knew the answer. I'd tell you if I did. The point is that what we do know what the psalmist affirms and what Jesus shows us is that when you stand like we stand today, like I feel like we're standing today, on Friday, on the last day Jesus was alive, 
on the day he went into the garden and he wept. When he asked for God to take it all away from him, but said, God, your will be done. As Jesus with integrity, justice, a commitment to God and to the truth, faced death and torture and pain and suffering, that night, died that evening, was dead all day Saturday. And then Sunday morning. Sunday morning came and it forever changed the world. For us, it forever changed our lives. It put us on a new path. It gave us new hope. It gave us reason to believe that when you lose your home, it's not the end of the story. That when you lose your income, it's not the end of the story. That when staff members of this church need to be let go of, whoever that staff member is, it's not the end of the story. That when radical change happens, That when loss and pain and suffering are faced with faith, with integrity, with truth, and with the commitment to the promise we've made to God, even though we stand on Friday, even though we face Friday night and Saturday to come, we don't live by those days. We live by the promise of what God is bringing on Sunday that unimaginable, that transformative, that resurrected, eternal, new life. I don't know what that looks like. And we don't need to rush to it. You can't run to it. You live through it. You live through it together. But I'm going to give you the glimmer of hope I've found that gives us reason to believe in Sunday is that this past week, I had a meeting with somebody who's interested in joining our church as a member. We have a new person. We have two people in our sanctuary who have only been here one, two weeks, one, one week. The future of this church is, I don't think this is going to close our church. I think there's a lot of reason to hope But to get to Sunday, we have to go through Friday and we have to go through Saturday. But if we do it with integrity, if we do it with truth, and if we do it with the promises we've made to each other, and most importantly to God, we will fulfill and we will know what the psalmist means when they say today, those who do this will never Be shaken. Amen. Hello, my choir. No, that's no, 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 no. We've been through this. Hello, my choir. That's that was terrible. That's terrible. One more time. Hello, my choir. There we go. It was it was interesting last Sunday when they told me, uh, of course, I was being let go. Uh, they said they had to search for my contract. It was my 11th year anniversary. Can you believe I've been here 11 years? I was in my 20s when I started here. Nobody laughed. That was pretty good. That was pretty good. I, I'm going to take care of myself over here. Everything. The other thing that they noticed uh, in my contract is that uh, uh, I had 30 days, if I wanted it, uh, to stick around uh, here and they're going to have to drag me away from those 30 days. So I'm sticking around to say goodbye to everybody, of course, in here. And I say hello, my choir, and everybody out there, because look at what God provided for us today. Has there been a choir song more choir than Amazing Grace? And I'm going to treat it just like it is. So Carol, I need you to sing the alto part, as everybody else is singing, of course. Don's here today. Don, you better be nailing down that tenor part. All right? Bass part for Kyle in the back. Rachel, we got the soprano. And I know that Lon is at home right now singing that tenor part as well. So everybody, please rise, sing Amazing Grace with me, and let's, uh, let's have a wonderful choir moment. Here we go. Amazing grace, how sweet. 
God's anointed. We go to sing songs of mirth, go as Christ's beloved, we go as the family of God, go as gifts of the Spirit, we go in spirit and in truth. Amen. Shepherds care and fold. 